hi everybody thank you guys so much for all the support you gave me on that last video that i put up um it really helps it really does help me get back in the algorithm just liking the videos if it resonates commenting sharing subscribing i really do appreciate it uh, I am a little bit nasally because I'm still, I, I don't know what it is. It's like I i was sick and now my allergies are acting up. So just bear with me. I know I kind of sound like crap right now, <laughs> but let's get right into the reading. Please also keep in mind that I do channel multiple energy groups on this channel. So there's times when I might have a dream and it's, you know, a, a very specific message for like three or four people on my channel. Other times it could be a collective message for a hundred people or more, sometimes somewhere in between. So, you know, there are different energy groups on here. So some of these readings will be for you and some of them will not be for you. So don't try to force them to fit. If it's your reading, it will resonate with you. Like you'll know that it's for you intuitively. Anyway, let's get right into it. So what's the story? What's the message for someone out there right now? Nine of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles. I, I keep hearing like someone's coming out of singlehood. I honestly, I think we'll get... I, I feel like this is almost really unexpected. This is either someone, I feel two different storylines here. So this is either someone brand new just coming into your life. And it's it's like you go, you know, within like a week or two period of time, you go from just being single, doing your own thing, focusing on yourself, focusing on your finances, just, you know, trying to meet your own goals, not really focusing on love like you might want love but it's it's like not like your main priority you're just kind of in this mentality whoever I'm speaking to it's like you're just in this mentality of you know love is going to find me when it's going to find me I've maybe you've been through a lot with people too so you're just at that point in your life where you're like you know what I've already wasted so many years I've already wasted so much energy on people that didn't love me back or people that didn't understand me um, I'm just I'm just going to be single and abundant and the right person will find me. I won't have to chase the right person. It's like you're getting into a, a higher perspective. I feel like you're really building your confidence. And I think that's part of why this love is coming in. So either this is a new person, like a brand new person that you're manifesting and they just come in out of the blue. It's going to be very unexpected. Or this could be someone from your past that... Maybe you haven't heard from this person in a, for, uh, for a while or it's like someone that you felt like maybe it was over with and then they just kind of come up unexpectedly because I think for a long time, if this is a past person, I feel like for a long time you were like, I'm hearing like energetically entangled with them or energetically like enmeshed with them. It's like they knew that they had you. Even if you guys weren't physically talking, they could still... Maybe your body language gave you away or your social media posts or your energy. It's like maybe just telepathically they could just feel you and they just knew that they still had you. They knew that you, they were, that you were waiting for them, that you were still holding out for them, that you were holding, you know, hope for something to happen. And it's like someone sees you, whoever this person is, whether it's new or old, they just see you as single and abundant and I feel like they want to come in before someone else does. It's it's like they want to come in quickly. Tell me about... Because they're seeing you as the empress. They're seeing that you're going through some kind of glow up or that you're... Even if you are struggling, I feel like you're very strong and you're very determined to make the world your oyster you're very determined to get ahead with your goals like even if you're upset about something you're still very determined to you know if you're going to school you're determined to finish school you're determined to get that promotion or you're determined maybe you have like artistic hobbies and pursuits and you're determined to make that happen no matter what and this person sees you as that they see you as this empress this you know all four queens combined someone who's strong who's motherly nurturing abundant Tell me about this Knight of uh, Pentacles and Knight of Pentacles. Knight of Swords, 
Nine of Wands. Six of Cups. I feel like part of, if this is a past person, I feel like part of why they just kind of, it's like they knew that they had you. And I mean, I don't want to say that they weren't taking you for granted because they were kind of taking you for granted a little bit, but I almost feel like it was more this energy of procrastination. It's like they saw themselves as a victim of something. Now, this could be like a victim of past relationships. It's just, I feel like it's more like a mentality that they were in that they felt was blocking them. So they did want to be with you, but they they were just in this mindset of like, well, I need to be perfect before I can do that. Or I need to heal this trauma before I can be with anybody. Or I, it's like, they just kept telling themselves that they weren't ready for you, that they weren't ready for a commitment. But I feel like something shifted with the six of cups. It's almost like they're in more of a lighthearted energy. Can you confirm that? With the knight of pentacles too, it's like, the Knight of Pentacles is the, is the slowest moving knight, but he's also the most stable knight. He's the most loyal knight. And so I think for a long time, this person felt like they couldn't give you that. They couldn't give you that pentacle. They, it's like they felt like maybe they have like a history of cheating and they're like, I can't, I can't be loyal. I don't know how to be loyal. I always end up, you know, uh, I'm self-destructive. I always end up going for these, to you know, toxic patterns or I give in to temptation. I don't know how to be loyal for this empress. Or I don't know how to be stable. Maybe they have like mental illness or they have other things going on. Um, basically, they were just sabotaging themselves. But I feel like something's happened, like your energy has shifted recently, or maybe they, maybe if like you're in each other's lives in the physical, they're seeing this glow up. They're just seeing that something's different. So kind of like the energy of you know how you'll try to help someone like you'll try to be there for someone and they just keep playing the victim or you try to support someone and just you know get them on a better path or or convince them that um you know to give love a chance whether it's with you or someone else like you just try to like you see through them you know what I mean and you try to help them through that but then it's like they just keep procrastinating they keep sabotaging they keep like they take your energy and they just run with it and they don't really make any changes and then when they're left all alone um when they don't have that energy when they don't have that that crutch to lean on anymore they have to make those changes on their own it's like they have no other choice so i'm almost getting this energy of like this person was in this eight of swords like victim mentality self-destructive self-sabotaging just holding themselves back from from love um, telling themselves that they don't deserve happiness or that they're not good enough for you or whatever it is. But I feel like now they're in this energy of like, oh shit, I'm going to lose her. Like they're recognizing your worth. They're like, this is an empress. This is all four queens combined. This is my ideal partner. I am, it, it's like they, they have, they don't have the crutch. They, they have to stand on their own or they're going to fall. You know what I mean? They're going to lose everything if they don't. They they have to be strong because they have no other option left but to be strong. They have to. They don't want to come forward. I, I mean, I don't I don't want to say they don't want to come. Well, yeah, kind of, honestly. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. No, I do want to say that. Um, Honestly, it's not even like them wanting to come forward. It's almost like they have to come forward. Like this man or this woman is like, I have to. I don't have a choice. I don't. I don't. I like. I'm not used to being loyal, or I'm not used to being stable, or I'm not used to this kind of relationship. I'm not. I don't know. How, like, I'm not good with commitment, whatever. But this person's kind of like looking at themselves, and they're like, I have no choice but to just force myself out of my comfort zone and be loyal, even if I'm not used to it. it it's kind of like a like the baby bird being pushed out of the nest. They're like, I don't know how to do this, but I know that I have to do this. Otherwise I lose this empress. So they're getting out of your, your absence and your power and just, you know, knowing your worth and not chasing them. I, I feel like all of this is bringing about some really big changes. It's like you did all you could for this person. And now they're, they're, they're doing it for themselves. Finally. Tell me more about the Six of Cups. Eight of Cups. 
Oh, okay, hold on. I'm hearing that you help them through childhood trauma. It's really interesting because I, I did feel like a lighthearted energy with the Six of Cups, but I think there's two messages there. For one, I feel like they are getting into that less of a pessimistic, negative, like, oh, I, I'm not good at love um, kind of energy. And I'm hearing that, that Halsey song, I'm, I'm bad at love. But I'm also getting here with like the Six of Cups and Eight of Cups and Queen of Cups and Ace of Swords. I feel like you help them through some kind of childhood trauma. It could be something you said or just your presence or your energy. I just, I feel like there's something here that happened that, um, that really just kind of helped them, that just, that, that helped them see things. What happened here? Could even be a past life, uh, like past life trauma or a past relationship. It's something from the past that deeply affected them. With the Nine of Cups and the Hierophant, though, it feels like it feels like they're finally understanding that their wish fulfillment lies in commitment. It so this person was non-committal, but but I feel like I don't think that they were non-committal. Because of like, like, you know how some people will just be noncommittal because they just, they want to be players and they don't want to be tied down and they just get bored in relationships. I don't really feel like that with this person. Even if this person was a player on like a surface level, I feel like deep down, they always wanted commitment. They always wanted, you know, marriage and true love and all of that. But I feel like they just didn't believe in it or they felt like they didn't deserve it. It's like they had some subconscious patterns and some blockages to get through. But I feel like they're getting through that now. It's like they're recognizing that they do want commitment, that they do, they want something different than what they're used to. I feel like there's information coming forward to this empress. Tell me about that. It's like they're just seeing you differently. They're just seeing you. I mean, not that they didn't value you before, but it's just like there's like a new level, a new recognition. I feel like they might also be seeing qualities in you that they didn't see before. So there could be certain characteristics, like maybe they didn't realize that you had a lot of emotional depth, or maybe they didn't realize that you have a really funny sense of humor that's similar to theirs, or they didn't realize how intelligent you are. And I feel like maybe for some of you, something's happened recently where they've realized that it's like, you've said something or you've done something or they overheard something. It's just something happened where they're like, Oh wait. Oh wow. Like I didn't, I didn't know that she had that side to her. I didn't realize like, this isn't just a queen. This is like an entire empress. This is, this is like, she's a lot more than I even realized, you know? It's like they already valued you, but they value you a lot more now, I feel. Oh, sorry. Random note really quick. Would you guys mind commenting me? Ugh, oh, my God. Would you guys mind commenting <laughs> and telling me, like, when you're on YouTube the most? Because I'm going off Pacific Standard Time, and I usually post the readings at night, usually between, like, 4 and 8 p.m., um, so I'm just wondering, like, is there a certain time that you guys watch readings, you know, the most often? Is it like morning, afternoon, nighttime? I'm just thinking about switching it up a little bit to, you know, get new views and whatnot. But anyway, the Empress, the Knight of Swords. What is this information? There's information here with the Knight of Swords. Information that's coming forward to this Empress. Two of Pentacles, Seven of Swords. Eight of Pentacles. Why the Seven of Swords? What is this? Oh, King. Of, okay, so it's not. Hold on. Oh, okay. I see what it is. This person was hiding their emotions for you. They were also, they didn't want to, um, this could be someone who's like a little, I don't know if prideful is the right word. 
because I honestly don't feel a super prideful energy. I mean, I feel like honestly, a lot of the men I channel are kind of prideful, but it's not like an abnormal amount of pride. You know what I mean? It's it's more, I don't even know if it's about, the, why, why did they hide their emotions? That's the sneakiness here. I'm like, what is the sneakiness? What were they juggling? And it's like, I feel like it's this side of themselves, this King of Cups side of themselves. They didn't want you to know how they feel about you. They didn't want you to know that they're actually emotional and romantic and idealistic like you are. They didn't want to, they are a King of Cups deep down, but they might present themselves as more of a King of Swords type. And I feel like what was going on behind the scenes is that they've been like working on all of this. Like they've been, they've been working on something here so that they can present a stable offer. Tell me more about why didn't they want you to, why didn't this person want you to know how they feel? For some, they needed to get their finances together. They, um, let's see. I feel like this is them working on themselves and working on their peace and their stability. Tell me more about this. They might have gone through a dark night of the soul. Like they might have had to go through some kind of breakdown. Um, it's like their old ways just were not serving them anymore. So they had to step into their power as the magician. They had to go inward. They had to do some soul searching. Yeah, with the King of Wands, I'm actually getting kind of a negative. I'm, I'm feeling like the King of Wands is connected to this devil energy. So I almost feel like the King of Wands. Um, and keep in mind, guys, that I do channel. So I might get different energies, you know, depending on the context, depending on what I'm feeling. Like in, in this context, I'm actually feeling like the King of Wands is actually a negative. It's it's another side of themselves. It's that um, that lustful side of themselves or that... Uh, it's that devil. Tell me more about that. It's like this devil energy, this, um, yeah, they really had to do some soul searching. It's an interesting reading. Hmm. I really feel like I really feel like this person, it's almost like they did all this work overnight, but it, it's not quite overnight. I almost feel like for a long time, they were in like almost this, uh, like I'm getting like the two of pentacles energy, almost this like state of limbo where they would go back and forth between like, I want to be a better person. I want to work on myself. I want to work on these, you know, negative characteristics self self destructive patterns. I think that's what the King of Wands is talking about is like passion, but not it it's not like true passion. It's more like drama. It's um giving into impulses, giving into temptation. You know, could be drugs or addictions or alcohol. I mean there's nothing wrong with like drinking and whatnot. I'm not saying that, but it it's just like 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 overdoing it. Um or just, you know, toxic patterns, like, because they're like a very passionate person. And I feel like that energy got the best of them. It's like they were losing themselves to certain things, to certain energies that they, need, they needed to work on things. Because this person does have a lot of depth and a lot of passion. But I mean, it feels like an overnight change, but it's not quite overnight, because I feel like for the longest time, they were like juggling um, it's like they were going, it's like almost like they were at war with themselves a little bit. It's like part of them was like, fuck it. Like I'm bored with life. So I'm going to go down this destructive path. 
or, you know, whatever, this girl's hot, I'm going to sleep with her, even though I know there's no connection there, like, I'm just going to give into the temptation, the temptation, third parties, um, or, like, just, just, or, like, beating themselves up, like, um, feeling like they wouldn't be good enough for the empress, like, they wouldn't be able to match her energy, um, it's just kind of being of two different minds, but they, at the same time, it's like they kept going back and forth. Like they were still kind of working on themselves because it's almost like they would give into these temptations, like, you know, third parties, uh, sex addiction or drugs or gambling or whatever it is they had going on, you know, like possibly mental illness for some as well that, um, I, I feel like it's like, a, you know, I can't diagnose anyone, but if it is a mental illness, I think it's like one of those mental illnesses that like causes someone to make very um impulsive reckless decisions you know like they go spend all their rent money or they go drive 140 miles per hour on the freeway in the middle of the night in the middle, middle of the night you know what I mean or they hit up their ex that's toxic and and have a one night stand with them it's like like impulsive decision making um but I feel like their soul was starting to come through and be like hey like I like you can have more than this. You can be more than this. And I think they were like at war with themselves because they have a lot of insecurities too. And I feel like they have a lot of insecurities based on this, um, this mental illness or like decisions that they've made in the past, like reckless decisions or just not being very strong willed, like being impressionable or, letting other people get the best of them, like just making very poor decisions, very poor impulse control in the past with this person. And I feel like they beat themselves up for that. And, and so it's almost like their insecurity, their ego was kind of at war with their, their soul, with their higher self that was trying to come through. It, it's kind of been just like a process of getting those two parts of themselves in balance with each other. Because I feel like for the longest time, they're like, you know, I do want more than this. I do want to heal this, or I want to seek counseling, or I want to quit this addiction, or I want to, I want more stability in my life. I want to be a better person. I want to figure my life out. And then there's this like insecure, you know, this little devil energy that came through and is like, oh, you're, you're shit. You're never going to be able to do that. Like no one's going to love you. Like could be like an ex that kind of traumatized them too, that got in their head, that made them feel that way as well. Um, so it's like they would start working on themselves and building themselves up and trying to be a good person. And then it's like that little, you know, devil on their shoulder, that insecurity would come through and be like, oh, you're never going to make it. It's too hard or or you're never going to be a good person. Like, some, you know, just things like that, just little insecurities that would come through. So I feel like, you know, there, that's been that that process that's been hidden from you for a while is, is them kind of wanting to work on themselves and wanting to be better and wanting to, to, you know, be stable and be loyal for you as well. Um, and then these hidden addictions, these hidden impulses, these hidden insecurities, uh, and hidden, you know, like that King of Cups side of themselves. I feel like they didn't want to present themselves as a King of Cups because they were afraid that they wouldn't be enough for you. They, they were afraid and it's it's like a lot of self sabotage. I almost feel like they felt like you would be better off without them. Like you would be healthier, you would be happier without them. They might feel like I'm getting for some like they feel like they have bad karma or bad luck or something like that. Like they might just feel like they're they just felt like they weren't good enough for you. And I feel like they know or they knew that you really loved them. So they knew that if they showed emotions, if they showed that King of Cups side of themselves, they showed that more that softer side. Um, they felt like if they showed that King of Cups side, if they showed that softer side, they felt like, you know, you would make them cave. Like, you you know what I mean? Like you would be like, oh, I love you back. Like you would say something or do something and they would just cave and they wouldn't be able to shut you out anymore. So I feel like this person pretended not to have feelings or they pretended to be like, they just kept it hidden. Like they didn't show you the full extent of their, their feelings is what I'm feel is what I'm getting here. But yeah, they've been, you know, that's what's been hidden is that they've been like at war with themselves and these energies have been balancing out. But I feel like, I feel like now their higher self is taking over because it's, it's like, 
is it like there's actually a risk of losing you now? Or they're actually seeing your glow up. They, they feel like you're not going to be single for long. They feel like they've taken too long to get it together. Um, they also feel like I'm hearing that um, Gavin Rossdell song. Don't let the what it, what is it called? Don't let the glycerin glycerin. Don't let the days go by. Um, So it's like something kind of happened with you, with your glow up, with you leveling up, with you, you know, also just being single. They're like, you know, she's not going to be single forever. Like someone, you know, she's going to meet people. Maybe you're going out and you're being more social. So they're, they're kind of nervous about that. So I just feel this energy of like, they don't have the option of being in, you know, of listening to their insecurities, of listening to the, to the devil energy, the, uh, they don't have that option of, you know, juggling anymore and being at war with themselves. So I feel like the risk of losing you really made this person shape up. And I feel like they had that option before because it's like they knew that they still had you. You know what I mean? It's like they could they could listen to those insecurities and those commitment issues and those fears and self-sabotage. And um, I don't feel like this person is like a psychic vampire. Like, I don't think that's who they are, but they might have gone through a phase that they were kind of similar to a psychic vampire. Um, like I said, it's kind of like you were their crutch in a way. So it's like now that you've pulled your energy back, it's like it's like they don't have that option anymore. They don't have that option of sabotaging because before there was no risk of sabotaging. You know what I mean? It's like you were unconditionally loving, unconditionally supportive of this person. So in the past, it's like they could listen to those fears and insecurities and they gave into that energy. They gave into that into that temptation too, into their their poor, poor impulses, into desires, into lust, into whatever else. Um, and they didn't feel like they had to change that, even though they wanted to change that and they wanted to be better and more stable for you. They didn't feel like they had to change that necessarily, because they still had you. It's like they didn't have to be strong on their own because you were you were the strong one. You were being strong for them, but. So it's like they could go down that dark path and you would follow them down that dark path. You know what I mean? Like they could they could listen to that. They could sabotage and you would still support them. You would still be there. But, you know, things shifted. So now they're kind of freaked out because they're like, oh, shit, if I sabotage now, if I go down that path now, that karmic path, if I give into temptation, if I do, if I make the same decisions I made in the past, I'm going to lose this person. It's like they were willing to go because you were going with them. But now you've gone down this other path, this higher path, and you're not looking back. You're not babying them anymore. You're not mothering them. You're not like trying to push, you know, pull them towards this other path. You're like, I'm going down this path. Either you can catch up with me or someone else will. Um, so now they're like freaking out. They're like, oh, shit, I better I better run. I better run and catch up to this person before they get away from me for good. Um yeah, I just keep feeling like they, yeah, it's like sabotage. Like they felt like they were doing what's best for you. They felt like it's just, just sabotage patterns. But you have to be careful too when this person comes back around not to allow them to use you as a crutch again. Because they're trying to catch you right now. They're trying to, like they know they have to level up um, and, and match your energy if they want your attention, if they want your time again, they know they have to present a stable offer. They know it's like they're not cheating now or they're not messing around with other girls now because you're not allowing it anymore. That's the reason they're not doing it is because you don't tolerate it anymore. You don't make excuses for them when they do that anymore. You're in this energy of like, no, I know my worth. I'm not backing down from that. I'm standing my ground. I am the empress. I'm the high priestess. I'm standing in my power. Um... So it's like all that energy is like not an option for them anymore if they want to keep you. So I do feel them chasing you. I feel them coming running after you before before you get away for good. But I, I still feel like you just, yeah, just you need to be careful with this person. You need to be careful not to let them drag you back into old patterns. Tell me about that.
Three of Pentacles, death. This is a specific message for some. This is just probably for like three or four of you. There's a queen of pentacles. Could be an earth sign. It could be a friend. It could be a toxic mother. Um, could be like an ex or, you know, like someone that they messed around with. For some, if you want to be able to build with this person, you're going to have to demand that they let this person go. Um, and I think it's justified. It, I don't think it would come out if it was unjustified. This isn't like a, a friend that's like, you know, mostly positive, but they have some arguments. No, this is like someone that wanted to keep you apart. This is like someone that um, dragged them down, someone that manipulated them or someone that just wanted to separate you too. This is someone, if this is, if this part is for you, this is someone that was a major issue in your relationship and she wanted to be an issue in your relationship. Like, like the mother that like acts like her son is her boyfriend or, um, someone like controlling, uh, and dominant someone could be like a romantic third party and whatnot. And he might come back and be like, Oh, I want to be friends with this person. I don't, I don't like you, like, you know, that he cheated with her. Um, and he might come back and like, be like, well, we're not talking anymore. Like she's still on my social media. I'd be like, you, you're going to have to stand your ground and be like, because this, this person's energy has to be clear for you guys to be able to work through things. You know what I mean? Like there's trust that needs to be rebuilt for one thing. Um, but I feel like this person really doesn't want to be alone. So they try to have backup options. And so then again, that's just for some of you, but it's like this person might come back around and they've kind of let the third party go, but not fully. You know what I mean? It's like they, they're not, they might not be sleeping with them right now, but they still like have them as a friend on social media or something like that. You know what I mean? And, and you're going to have to stand your ground and be like, no, you cheated with this person or this person talked shit to me and tried to break us up. I'm there's, there's no way in hell I'm going to be okay with you guys still being friends or with you having her all, you know, on hold in case it doesn't work out with me. So you can go back to her. So you don't have to be alone. You're going to have to really stand your ground and be firm in that. Um, that was just for someone. Tell me more about this. The sun, the queen of wands. Page of pentacles. Why the tower? I feel like your spirit guides have your back. They're on your side. So if they do try to give you like little breadcrumbs or small offers, they're going to have a tower moment in their life. Justice is on your side. Tell me more. <coughs> Sorry. Can this person be trusted when they come back? Let me actually feel into this. I think it's more channeling than it is tarot cards. Let me feel this energy. Hmm, can this person be trusted when they come back? I just almost feel like a... I don't know if childish is the right word, but... It's like they miss your light. They miss your energy. You're, you're going to have to set strong boundaries with this person when they come back. I don't... How do I explain it? It's like they're changing for you, but they don't really, part of them doesn't want to change. Like they, they, I don't, I don't want to say they don't want to change. It's like they, um, they're not as strong as you are. They, they don't believe in themselves the way that you believe in yourself. You know, they have a very different perspective than you do when it comes to, uh, introspection and whatnot. So I don't want to say it, it's almost like imposter syndrome. It's, it's not that they don't want to change necessarily, but it's like, they don't, they, they, they don't really fully believe that they can change. It's like, they don't know how to do it. So, I mean, this person is, I do feel like this person is coming back intending to be loyal to you because they know that they have to, to keep you. Um, they're intending to be stable with you. They're intending to give you an offer, but it's like, it's, it's not, 
I don't know how strong the foundation is, though. That's the thing. It, it just kind of feels like it's like they're doing it because they have to. You know what I mean? They're like, I'm going to lose this person for good if I don't do this, if I don't commit. Um, how do I explain this energy better? I honestly, and this person could have a demonic attachment too. I mean, this person could also need some kind of counseling or some kind of spiritual help. But I feel like, I feel like this, prob this story is probably going to have to like play out, I feel, because I'm not getting a super solid foundation. Again, it's just like, I feel this energy of like imposter syndrome. They're like, I'm going to, it's like someone just like jumping out of an airplane where they're like, they've never done it before. They're just doing it. They're like, I have to do it. I have no choice, but I don't want to. I'm not experienced. It's that kind of energy is what I'm getting in regards to them being like loyal and stable and committed to you is that they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to do this, but they know that it's very unfamiliar for them, but they're like, well, I have to, otherwise I lose her for good. I don't have another choice. Um, What I'm hoping is that they end up surprising themselves because right now they're, they're almost feel like they're faking it. You know what I mean? They almost feel like it's like they've been working on themselves. Like, you know, like I was, I was saying, it's like, they've been kind of, you know, at war with themselves a little bit, kind of back and forth. Like they, they do want to be better, but they don't even know what that looks like. They don't have guidance. They don't have anyone like mentoring them. So they're very lost. They're very confused. But, um, it's almost like an overnight change. I mean, it seems overnight because it's like they're making these changes so drastically to catch up with you before they lose you. But um, I almost feel like you're going to have to lead by example. You're going to have to stay in your power, though. You're going to have to stay strong and set boundaries. I know I keep repeating this, but I keep repeating it because I'm like, I'm feeling like there's more information that's coming through. And sometimes when I repeat things, like I, I channel more. It's like I, I pick up, you know, I get back in, in tune with that storyline, with that energy. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to, you're going to have to set boundaries. It's, it's almost like a mother being kind of strict with their child in a way. Um, you're, you're gonna, they're going to test you. They're going to push your button. They might push your buttons at some point. So if you want this person back, I'm, I'm you're going to have to there, there's certain things that you can't waver on. Like, no, we're not, we're not going to have that ex as a friend when I know that you cheated with her. Like it's not happening. Um, like there's certain things that you're just going to have to be really strict with. I, I feel, um, but yeah, what I'm hoping, I'm, what I'm hoping happens is that, is that they surprise themselves because right now it's almost like, and I don't want to say they haven't been progressing. Like, even though they've been at war with themselves, I do feel like it's a good thing that the desire to change is there, even if they don't believe in themselves, even if they even if they think it's just like a fantasy that they could change and be a better person. It's it's good that the desire is there at least. Um, so, I mean, there has been changes. It's been kind of up and down, kind of, you know, a little bit turbulent. But, but yeah, this drastic almost overnight change with them, like, you know, running to catch up to you and pulling you back in. Um don't let them take you down that karmic path with them. You you need to keep going forward. They need to keep come. They need to go with you on this path. Um, don't let them try to weasel their way in and, and negotiate and get you back on that in those old patterns on that old path with them. You know what I mean? But anyway, sorry, what I keep trying to say and I keep getting sidetracked is so so it's almost like they're coming to you and they almost feel like it's like imposter syndrome, like. Like, I'm going to present myself as stable. I know I have a lot of work to do. They're, they're kind of hoping that they can present themselves in a really good light to you to seem like an emperor, to match your empress energy, and that maybe they can, behind the scenes, keep working on themselves and, you know, who know they, they don't know what's happening. They don't know if they can become the emperor or not, but they're like, well, I'm, I'm going to just, I'll work on myself more behind the scenes and then I'll present myself in this really good light to them. I'll present a stable offer, even if I'm inexperienced and not ready for it. I'm going to have to just, you know, I'm going to have to just do that. And I have no other choice at this point. But, um, like, I'm hoping that, uh, maybe for this energy group that they surprise themselves. So it's like, they come to you with this, you know, offer of loyalty and stability, and they don't fully believe in it. They're offering it to you 
you know, but they don't fully, they don't know if they're capable of it. They're, they're a lot of talk, you know what I mean? And I, I think that I'm just hoping that like they surprise themselves, like maybe they offer it to you and they, they are forced to be in that role of the emperor and maybe they'll be surprised that they're actually capable of doing it. Like they find like a new way of thinking, like a new perspective, a new way of being, you know what I mean? Like at first it just feels like imposter syndrome. It feels like fake it till you make it. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never, you know, I'm not used to being in this leadership position or I'm not used to being committed like this, but maybe they get used to it. You know what I mean? Like they get used to this new energy, this, this new, uh, way of connecting with you. Um, but again, it only, I feel like it only happens if you stay in your power because that, that insecurity is still there. It hasn't just magically gone away. So, so you have to stand strong. You have to stay on your path no matter what. This person, I'm getting the same message that I was getting with that Queen of Pentacles. This first someone, like, this person doesn't want, they cannot stand being alone. They cannot stand themselves. They have to always, they might have, like, a personality disorder or something where it's, like, they cannot, because this is, like, the world. we got the Four of Pentacles, someone holding on tightly to some something or someone. So it's almost like moving forward with you, but they're not. They're going to have to fully let go of the third party. Whoever it was that caused issues in your relationship, they have to, you're going to have to stick to that. Don't let them be, like, if it's like a toxic mother that just, like, hated you and she wanted you to not be with her son, you're going to have to, you're going to have to stand your ground because this person's probably going to be like, but she's my mom, like, this and this, this. You're going to have to be like, okay, that's fine, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to subject myself to that. I'm not going to be abused by someone just because they're your mother. You're going to have to, I'm not doing that. Or I don't care if you're friends with this third party, you did sleep with them. You did cheat on me with them. I'm I'm not okay with you being friends with someone that you cheated on me with. Like, cause this person might, I just feel like this person is going to try to play the, um, like the sympathy or the empathy card and be like, oh, but this person, like this, this third party, this woman doesn't have anybody else or she's all alone or she's going through this or that. So I need to be there for her. Like you understand that, right? Like he, he's, I feel like he's going to try to, he's, he's going to try to manipulate it so that you're okay with him having this third party like on the like in the background like they're not going to be talking but they're still going to be like friends on social media or something like that um and it's it's not really for her best interest it's he's going to present it like it's for this third party's best interest like he wants to be there for her to support her but I honestly feel more like it's he doesn't want to be alone if things don't work out with you he knows this party is insecure this third party is dramatic and he knows he can go crawling back to her if you reject him so he, he wants a backup option. And if he really loves you, you're going to have to be like, no, there's not going to be a backup option. We're not, we're not doing that. And then if it's like a mental illness, you're going to need to be like, okay, well, you need to get some support for that. You can't, you know what I mean? Like, don't be, be supportive of this person, but don't make excuses. Don't let them manipulate you or gaslight you um, or any of that. If, if you do decide to give this another chance. So anyway, I'm going to put this out there. Thank you guys so much for watching. As I said, I appreciate your comments and likes and, and sharing and subscribing if it resonates. It re really means everything to me, getting back in the algorithm um, and doing these readings for you guys. So thank you for your support.